Hey, what's up everybody? Jesse here out in my shop on this Monday afternoon, just doing a bunch of little projects as normal. And I was thinking about sheep's head jigs and jigs in general. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna shoot a quick video talking about this and how they have kind of taken over the whole scene from the way it was back when I first started fishing for sheep's head. And, you know, back in 2016, 2017, when I first got into, you know, fishing for them at the bridge anywhere, really, I was taught to use hand tied rigs, you know, just a piece of floor or a mono, with a dropper loop on it and then another loop at the bottom with a bank sinker or whatever weight you basically can run one or two crabs and drop it down a pile and that's how you fished for them it worked as evident in my earliest videos and that's what i used and i caught plenty of fish on them but i was always amazed about how much weight we had to use most of the time three ounces is what i rocked to get you know on that pile and get it down of course i learned to downscaling the uh main line and also the leader as much as you could you know definitely helped you know in the current but it was limited as far as the weight that you could get away with and then i don't know that winter i think 2017 into 2018 i saw some videos of john skinner up north using these modified jigs that had you know the weight on them that was more weight but smaller hooks and he was black fishing or tall tug fishing as we call them and he was doing really good he talked very highly of them and i found some at a tackle shop uh, they called the butter bean jig or something like that. I don't know. And I took them to the concrete ships with some crab, and I did really good myself as well. I caught a bunch of a uh, tall talk that day, uh, more so than I think I would have if I had been using a hand tied rig. The jigs, they kind of suck though, to be honest. The hooks were terrible. I mean, you just fish one time and the hooks were done. But anyway, fast forward some into that spring. I started seeing my buddy Elias uh, rocking these uh, jigs called bottom sweepers and he was using them to catch really big drum and stuff. I hit him up and asked about them and he told me where to get them and I ordered some. They worked great. Actually some of my earliest drum were caught on bottom sweepers, you know, with a piece of blue crab on the bottom. Unfortunately, I thought that's the way they were meant to be fished was on the bottom. They were called bottom sweepers, you know, and I never really thought of trying them suspended uh, the way that we fish for sheeps on the pylons. I don't know, a couple more months went by and I was fishing that summer and it just kind of occurred to me one day, I think it was out at Wise Point, and I kept getting robbed by the smaller sheep's head there. And I had a little half ounce bottom sweeper with a smaller hook and I tied it on my rig on a lighter tackle setup, dropped it right down and instantly hooked up and caught one. And I was like, holy crap, they work suspended. <laughs> Who knew, right? I mean, it's dumb of me not to realize that that would work. So I feel like I was one of the first in this area to actually adopt and start using them. And you can see it in my videos in 2018 as that kind of evolved. And basically that's strictly what I use now to catch sheep's head or even talk talk. So here we are, what, five years later? They're all over the place now. A bunch of people making them. Basically there's two styles of jigs too. You've got the saltwater banana NC style jig right here, which has kind of got this shape. This is actually the one that I prefer. And then you've got the saltwater boxing glove NC jig here that a lot of people have for sale. These are the two basic shapes that you see out there. Uh, I prefer the banana style myself. Uh, nothing against these. I just have always fished with them instead, to be honest with you. All right, now as far as finding these jigs, you, you can buy them online. They're expensive. I've seen them on Amazon, 10 bucks for two. It's crazy. Uh, even the bottom sweepers, I know they're really good quality, but they're very high priced. And they haven't really caught on mainstream in a lot of the tackle shops. You're not seeing them everywhere. Like I go to the Outer Banks, I don't really see them in tackle shops down there. You go to Virginia Beach, you know, at Ocean's East, they have a pretty good selection there. I think they carry, they've had different ones through the years, but I think right now the main one that I prefer that they carry is called First Flight Lures. I think it's a guy down in Wilmington that makes them. He uses the proper hooks, and that's one of the big thing about the jigs. You want to make sure that whoever's making them is using the right hooks, which are the Mustad Ultra Point 2X, uh, model number 32824 to be specific. Hooks is what you want to make sure these jigs that you're buying have in them. And most of the molds that are sold use this particular hook, so that's good. This is an indestructible hook. I have never broke one of these. Very good hooks. If you're buying them, you definitely want to make sure that it has those hooks in it. All right, now as far as finding these jigs, I suggest in your local area, checking around with friends, get online and find somebody that's making them and selling them legitly make sure he's actually paying his taxes and stuff that's the best way to get them and get a good deal on them and just support a local business keep the money local keep it in your community i'm all about that i know down in north carolina first flight lures uh i think he's out of wilmington like i said he uses the same molds the good hooks they work great 
uh, here in the Virginia Beach area. Everybody's heard of Chong's Jigs. It's actually pronounced Chong. I had a bunch of his last year that I ordered from him. He has literally next level paint jobs on his. I think he sprays his instead of powder dipping them. But he's got all these like fantastic paint jobs on him. This actually here is a Fiddler blend that he came up with uh, at my request. Works great. He uses the proper hooks. He does have another style that he promotes uh, that has the boxing glove style jig head and he puts these different hooks in I think he calls them the sickles hooks. They're nice because you can put bigger baits on them if you like using blue crab or if you're fishing the bottom but to be honest with you I've had several of these hooks break on me mainly because I was hooked into a really big fish like a drum or something. I've never broke one on a sheet but you know fishing the bottom and stuff occasionally you'll catch a big black or a big red or something and th these hooks here are not as durable as the mustad hooks. But great design, great thought. Just uh, I don't really use those because, like I said, the hook's broken on me. I now a little bit farther north, up in the Gloucester area, there's Andy Horsley with First Cast Jigs. He's on Facebook. Check him out in that area if you want to get some good quality jigs. Once again, he has the same mold, same designs. He's using the proper mustad hooks. So look around, keep the money local, support these businesses and people that are willing to take their time to do these things. Now, I recently, I've fished with all these jigs for the years. They work great. I just started making my own this year just for cost efficiency. And that's another thing I want to talk about. Like this jig here is one that I made, just basic powder dip paint job on it. They work great. I use the same hooks. And just to throw this out there for anybody who's interested, there is another local business right in Smithfield, Virginia, called Third Island CNC. And yes, it's named after the third island in the bags this dude loves to fish he's on ebay under the username uh, cnc-works and he has the most impressive line of jig molds that you can buy out here it's fantastic the quality of these molds actually i have two of them here that i've purchased this is one and these are all cnc machined out of aluminum see it's that third island cnc they open up this one here is a bullet head jig mold for large jig heads that I make for catching drum because the Z-Mans were the only ones that I found out there that used the same Mustad 32824 hooks except much larger of course for drum these hooks do not break and I started making these and saving a ton of money because it was ten dollars for two of these from Z-Man and I can make them for about 60 cent a piece and I also bought the North Carolina banana jig mold here oops a piece of lead fell out for making these sheep's head jigs it works fantastic of course i've already had the melting equipment and all that stuff because i have some molds that i got from do it molds a couple years ago for making jigs for trout and stuff they're all cast aluminum molds to where these are cnc machines so you get much higher quality out of these but yeah check them out on ebay like i said another local business if you want to get into making your own jigs this is a great guy uh, his shipping was quick. The products are fantastic. He's really responsive to messages and they work great. And I actually sat down and figured out if you were to make your own jigs, how much it would cost buying, you know, the lead on Amazon, buying the hooks in bulk, buying the, you know, the powder paint here from Protect that you can dip them right in. And it works out for like these one ounce jigs here, just buying in basic quantities, not huge bulk, but basic quantities. Of course, the more you buy, the cheaper it will be. It worked out from 40 to 50 cent a jig to make one of these. That's paint, hook, everything. So that's cheap, which is awesome. Now, of course, you have to buy the mold, which this one here, I think was 160. Uh, the one, his all of his molds vary around from 140 to 170, somewhere in that price range. And he's got all the different weights and sizes that you can possibly want for making any of these jigs. But yeah, definitely check it out. So it's much more cost effective long term. Of course, you got to make up for buying the melting pot, which is about 100 bucks. Um, other than that, just a basic little toaster, which. I've got something exciting to show you in a future video about that. Uh, anyway, I'm not getting into that today. Anyway, it's just been amazing. Over the last few years, I wanted to say watching a new form of fishing kind of come along and evolve. And the jigs showing up on the scene here locally at least and taking over the sheep's heads fishing. They work fantastic. I've tried them down at the Outer Banks. They work just as well there. 
if you're a sheep's head fisherman or a top top fisherman and you haven't tried using jigs definitely give it a shot because they were incredible so i think that's really about all i wanted to talk to i think i covered it pretty good and just support local businesses keep the monies in the communities and get out and do some fishing y'all so peace out i'll see y'all in the next one